According to the Center for Disease Control, or the CDC, one in 54 children in the U.S. are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. But April is all about bringing awareness and celebrating differences. Here with more on an organization dedicated to supporting affected families is Kat Botkin, Executive Director for the Low Country Autism Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is such a special month for our community. It certainly is. And if I could just ask you why you in particular are involved with uh, the Autism Foundation. I have a son on the spectrum who is five. I gave up my sales career of uh, 12 years um, to take care of him. And then I wanted to get back into something that I was really passionate about. So that's how I got into laugh. And how was he diagnosed? He's only five years old, which he's he's pretty young. And I understand autism disproportionately affects boys over girls. Correct. But can you tell us about the development of your son and the signs that you notice that there could be something there? Sure. So we were actually very lucky. We have a pediatrician that did the 18-month autism screener where you go through a series of questions and um, all of the milestones that we're all used to as parents. Typically, those are delayed. That will be your first indicator, crawling late, head sitting up late, turning over, those types of things, and of course, talking late. Uh, my son is nonverbal, so that was a big indicator for us. But typically, a pediatrician at 18 months will do that screener. For your family. Interesting. And when you received the diagnosis, what was the feeling that went through you? It was tough. You know, we kind of suspected that our son was delayed, but once we went through the process of the screener and then our pediatrician sent us over to MUSC and we received the diagnosis at two years old, it was a very fast process. So there was a lot of grieving that went through um, my husband and I initially, but we've come a long way in two and a half years. So was there any sense of, I don't know if I want to use necessarily the word relief, but just to know what the issue was that you then had a specific challenge that you had a goal to work towards? Yes and no. I mean, I think it was it was really tough and we were in a little bit of denial for a while. But then once we were set up with early intervention services and case managers who were helping us, we were relieved to know that we caught it early because early intervention is everything for progress for our kids. And you say that he's nonverbal now. Do you have hopes that he will essentially either grow or work himself out of that? I do. I do have hope. He has ABA and speech and he's with a great school right now. And he has a lot of talking that I understand. No one else understands it. Um, but yes, we think it's a matter of if not or not if, but when. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how about the community as a whole? I, I would imagine going through different programs, you meet a lot of other parents who are also going through the same thing. So what has it been like to have that support around you? Well, at first it was scary because oftentimes families kind of retreat and they don't want to talk about it. But once you get over that hump and you have other families that want to support you and kind of guide you on your journey, it makes all the difference. So we have really been trying to help other families with support groups here at LAF. So it's been hard with COVID, but yeah. there's a lot of great support out there. Definitely. So let's talk about the foundation. So uh, when was it founded and what are some of the programs that people can get involved in? Yes, we started in 2007 in Hilton Head. So we service all the way from Charleston to Hilton Head. So that's 11 counties yeah. and we have 2,300 families that we service. And wow. that's not even talking about all the calls we get from families that aren't registered. So we have a very large autism community and we have so many programs that we offer at no cost, swim lessons, art therapy, music therapy, respite night, uh, the list goes on. And now that we have so many people vaccinated, we're hoping to have more parent training in person and support groups. So lots of exciting things. That's that's terrific. Um, and just speaking of vaccinations, because I know, uh, and this is not necessarily apropos to what you were just saying, but um, when people talk about the causes of autism, did you learn anything about the cause of the autism in your son? Was it explained to you? Because for a while there, people were saying vaccinations of various kinds caused mm -hmm. autism, which they've 
declared that that there is no correlation there. But do you know anything more about that for families who are watching this and just wondering, well, how does it happen? That's so tough. Every parent, right, wants to know why, how did this happen? Did I do anything? And we really just don't know. There's no concrete proof or evidence or studies that can say exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but we think that through some of the studies that are happening, it's environmental and some genetics are involved. Mm -hmm. um, so I hate that we don't have an answer. I wish I had one too, but there's a lot going on and we'll find out more. Definitely. All right. Well, this is a good place to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about the fundraisers that are coming up. It sure. looks like a great golf tournament. Got yes. weather for it. So let's talk about that in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We've been chatting with Kat Bodkin, Executive Director for the Low Country Autism Foundation. April is Autism Awareness Month, and there are two wonderful uh, events that are coming up. And Kat, why don't you go ahead and tell us more about this golf tournament? Sure. We have... Ales for Autism coming up on the 24th, and it's a full day of fundraising. We have a golf tournament at Crescent Point, and you can find out all of our information on our website. And then the evening is at Southern Barrel Brewery, where we'll have a silent auction and all kind of live music and food, so you can see everything on our website. We hope you'll join us in Bluffton. Absolutely. And our friends from the Joggle Factory, they're also collaborating. And yeah. uh, you've got some wonderful sponsors there. Uh, finally, can you just share with our audience what you hope that they can take away from not just the segment, but uh, just understanding autism a little bit better? Sure. Um, this month, and a lot of people say awareness, I think a really great way to approach it is acceptance. There are so many individuals with autism that you don't even realize have, have autism. So uh, differences makes us unique. And don't be scared to ask questions and um, educate yourself. Um, that, that just goes such a long way for our families. Yeah, and there's so, so much education out there. I just Yes. A ton of websites and, and news articles and any way that you can get yourself familiar with the autism spectrum disorder. And I, I, Kat, I want to thank you so much for joining us and sharing these events with us. So we're going to share that with our audience and uh, hopefully you have a fantastic turnout and you raise a lot of money. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're back in two minutes. <laughs> 